One of my favorite types of stories are those that start in schools. I think the experience of surviving high school instantly connects us to places with similar settings, because we understand the framework of the world. There are teachers and classes and homework that never seems to end, but there's also clubs and dances and trying to catch that one person's attention even though they don't actually know your name. But what I love more than school-based media is media that starts in a school and transitions into a war. Maybe I'm brainwashed by years of American propaganda, but I love me a military academy. And frankly, judging by the success of properties like Fire Emblem Three Houses, Naruto, and RF Kuang's Poppy War trilogy, I'm not alone. They're a great starting place for characters to learn deadly skills while establishing bonds and rivalries, all with the expectation that those elements will pay off after graduation, when it's no longer about passing classes, but taking lives. That two-act structure, of romantic academic setup and harsh militaristic payoff is one of the most satisfying storytelling modes I've encountered, and I'll never stop loving it. Which is why, when I learned of Aaron Lynn's Kickstarter for Spectres of Brocken, I immediately added the game to my to-review list. Influenced by Three Houses and Naruto, but also by Gundam and Friends at the Table's Counterweight season, Spectres is a game that explicitly emulates stories about students facing each other across battlefields, torn between the love they once shared and their devotion to their causes. It's exactly the kind of narrative-focused game I want to see in the world, and I'm so glad it's finally being released. Go to class, have big feelings, and have it all fall apart as the world is consumed by mecha warfare. High school never ends. You just graduate to the front lines. Spectres of Brocken is divided into two phases, an academy phase and a conflict phase. While players will flesh out distinct setting features and details, the game centers around two core tenets. First, you are attending a school where mech pilots train for battle. Second, you will eventually pilot those mechs against your former classmates. This framing device may feel limiting, but I appreciate that Spectres knows what kinds of stories it wants to tell. The academy phase is all set up. You figure out two important aspects of your characters, who they are, and what do they want. These questions are answered through roleplay, using scene prompts to structure the situations you might find yourselves in. Your pilots can engage in a practice battle, where maybe a character's true willingness to succeed at all costs is revealed. On the other hand, there might be a ball or a formal dance, where your characters might grapple with their social class just as easily as they fight for the attention of their crush. While these scenes might seem mundane, their purpose is to interrogate and discover the person your pilot is becoming, and foreshadow the kind of warrior they'll turn into. When your players all feel good about who their pilots are, you'll decide what happened to send you on your separate ways. Maybe war breaks out suddenly, maybe one of you goes rogue, or maybe, as so often happens in real life, life gets in the way, and you all drift apart. What brings your characters back together is the conflict. Years have passed, factions have emerged, and your characters are caught on one side or another. Most importantly, your characters have changed along with the world. They're older now, more certain of themselves and their goals. And of course, they have their very own mecha. The second half of the game mirrors the first. You're still role-playing within the framework of a scenario prompt, a risky ambush, a drawn-out siege, or an all-out battle. The stakes are just higher, and much more bloody. Inspired by the traits, bonds, and motivations established from your days in the academy, you'll describe your fighting styles and political positions, and see your worst fears realized as you go face-to-face -face against old friends, realizing your old debates are now being settled by force of arms. The gameplay of Spectres of Brocken takes place almost entirely within the framework of role-played scenes. What makes Spectres great is that because the roleplay is the game, there's much more mechanical support for dramatic moments than in games where most of the rules are devoted to combat. Inspired by Avery Alder and Benjamin Rosenbaum's No Dice, No Masters framework, Spectres relies on words and moves to negotiate a scene, working towards answering that scene's primary question. If you've played games like Wonder Home or Galactic, you'll see it's fairly similar trading and adding words to a word bank instead of swapping tokens. At setup, each player will contribute two words to the word bank, a shared pool of prompts, setting elements, or topics of discussion that are boiled down to one word. When you begin to act out scenes from the academy phase, these words will shape the focus of your conversations, but also serve as currency when you want to shape the narrative. Of the five moves you can make during the academy phase, three are focused on revealing the nature of your relationships, highlighting details about your setting, and answering the question posed at the top of the scene. 
These are analogous to weak moves, in that they reward you for opening up the play space. The other two are stronger moves, in which you spend words to take decisive action or try to define who another player's character is. The flow of play is simple. First you have to collaborate, then you can take control of the narrative. In the conflict phase, you take a similar route. Additional words are added to the bank, aspects of your characters that weren't resolved in the first phase are now fully drawn out, and space is made for blood tokens, a tool to track how bloody each scene is predicted to be, and who is responsible for the bloodshed. Notably, a scene cannot end until all of its blood tokens are either removed from play or distributed among pilots. This requirement further emphasizes how the moves made in the conflict phase have much higher stakes than before. Now you gain words by putting yourself in a bad situation, or reflecting how little you've grown since the academy. When you finally draw your beam saber and let loose upon the world, you gain blood tokens and lose links and bonds with other people you've met throughout play, representing the ways in which you hurt others in your attempt to end the conflict. Most interesting to me is how the most mechanically costly move, this is me now, does not grant you overwhelming strength to destroy your foes, but instead highlights how your pilot has become someone who has moved on from the things they've done in the past. In fact, both conflict phase moves that allow players to remove blood tokens without absorbing them into their characters require spending words. I find it fitting that Lim places such a price on overcoming obstacles without turning yourself into a monster. That mechanical provision makes clear what Spectres believes about redemption during war. While there will always be some difficulties, especially with a preview draft like the one I'm reviewing, I think Spectres is largely successful at getting what it wants out of play. It asks a lot of its players in terms of roleplay, but it never advertises itself as anything other than a game where you put yourself in situations and feel feelings about them. Lim knows his audience. I think what really locks Spectres in for me is how it resolves the end of the conflict. After you've decided whether the war ended peacefully, with a climactic final moment, or never really ended at all, you zoom in on your pilots and ask how each of them try to recover. Pilots that played key moments in each scene have their names inscribed on monuments, but the player who took the most blood tokens can decide how public opinion turns on the people who might have once been called heroes. The connections you've lost due to the conflict are eulogized via memorials, places where your pilots might sit with the dead and tell the ghosts that things just aren't the same without them. However, the player with the fewest blood tokens can introduce a small point of light, a moment of grace that gives your veterans reason to have hope for the future, despite the darkness of their pasts. Spectres, like all good mecha media, understands that the genre isn't just wow cool robots. It's about the relationships you develop with people, and the ways in which politics and war turn once cherished connections sour. At the end of Spectres, you won't be celebrating a noble victory over a sinister but ultimately doomed bad guy. You'll be sitting by your friend's graves, wishing you could go back to all-nighters in the library and dressing up for the school dance. This game is poignant and thoughtful and exemplifies exactly what I want out of Military Academy stories. By the time this video comes out, it'll be too late to back the Kickstarter, but keep this one on your radar. One day, when you're looking for a game that'll make you feel every exhilarating, jagged emotion the same way you did when you were young, Spectres of Brocken will be there. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everybody who takes the time to make it through all my videos. Um, you know, if you could like and comment on all that YouTube stuff, I'd appreciate it. But the best way to get more people to, to see my stuff is for you to personally recommend it to them. If you have a video that you like in particular, I would love if you um, sent it to someone and said, hey, you have to watch this. I, I'd really appreciate that. Um, if you want to see more of the stuff I do, I'm at AaronSXL on Twitter, where I tweet about tabletop RPGs, health policy, and writing. I also um, do two podcasts with my friends. The first one is at Mortified Pod, uh, where me and my friend Layla do critical media analysis. I think by the time this video comes up, we'll have talked about the uh, Tamsin Muir novel Nona the Ninth, um, which was going to be um, a very fun conversation, I hope. I also do another podcast with my friends uh, Michael and Josh, who are ex-evangelicals. That's at the Bible Boys, and we are working our way through our spooky season, where we will be talking about um, probably the Last Exorcist, but we also talked about um, the Omen from 1976, which was uh, a horror classic that um, was pretty good, I thought. Um, so, if that seems interesting to you, please check out those podcasts as well. Uh, thank you, as always, for watching. Um, I will hopefully have another video out in about two weeks, but until then, uh, see ya!